Today's tutorial is of a character called Handsome Jack and he is from the game Borderlands. I've had many requests from the gaming community and the cosplayers to do this, so this is my version of it. This is my model Jack, you may have seen him from a few of my other Halloween tutorials. Now he owns a prop making company and he's made the brackets that we're going to be gluing onto the face here and to glue them on I'm using Mastic. The trick when using this glue is to apply it to the product and wait for it to go slightly tacky first and then apply it to your skin and you need to use the correct remover to get this off. Now we're going to map out the shape for the mask and I'm using eyeshadow on an angle brush to do this. We draw a line from the end of the hinge down and swoop him round to meet the top of the ear. I'm placing a dot in the centre of the forehead in between the brackets and then I'm going to draw a line from the top of the left bracket down to meet that dot and then we're going to draw a line from that middle dot up to the top of the right bracket and that's giving us a shallow triangular shape which is the top of the mask. And now we need to mimic the other temple so we're drawing a line from the end of the bracket swooping round to meet the top of the ear. Handsome Jack has quite a heavy brow so we need to put a bit of shadow in so we're going to create this by drawing another small triangle across the bridge of the nose and up to a point from the beginning of the brows. And then we're going to map in a new eyebrow shape because Handsome Jack has got quite defined high arched brows. To really help us get this shape we're going to block out the outer half of Jack's eyebrows. To do this I'm using FX Wax which I got from Charles Fox in Covent Garden. I've combed Jack's eyebrow hair so it faces in one direction and then using the spatula I'm smoothing the wax over the outer half of the eyebrow hair. I'm using my thumb to cover the hair that I don't want in the wax and then I'm using my spatula just to drag the wax down the remaining hair that I do want covered. I don't know if you can see but the hair I've chosen is from the arch of Jack's eyebrow downwards. Once all the wax is smooth and there's no excess left on the skin, we're going to use this sealant by Crowlin and this is going to seal the wax in place so that we can apply product over the top of it. Now when you're working with this, if you want a smooth finish you need to work quickly, so smooth it straight over and then leave it alone. Now I'm applying Supra Colour Foundation to the forehead. I'm using a foundation for two reasons, I want it to look very characterised so we want to take out Jack's natural skin pigment. And the other reason I'm using foundation is because we're going to be applying false frown lines to the forehead using eyeshadow. Now eyeshadow over cream works really well if you haven't set the cream because you can blend and it makes light work of the shading so you don't have to keep going backwards and forwards to get a nice gradient. The colour of Handsome Jack's mask is hard to describe, it's like a stone colour but with slightly yellowy appearance to it. So I've mixed two super colours together. The bulk of the colour is 521 which is like a creamy yellow shade and then I've put in a hint of 517 which is like a dark grey shade. I've mixed those colours on the back of my hand to warm them up and then I'm using a buffing brush by Real Techniques just to buff that over Jack's face. I'm working in circular motions and blending the colour out. I'm using a concealer brush to paint in the lines that we've created for the mask and I'm following down the temple, down past the ears to the jaw and then I'm going in a straight line from the end of the jaw to the chin so it looks like the mask has been put onto Jack's face and it doesn't go down his neck. Using that concealer brush we're going to pat that colour onto the brows that we've blocked out so this is going over the sealant. You want to use a pat in motion because you want to lay the colour down and you want to build the colour up. You don't want to drag the colour because otherwise the brow hair will just show through again. Once you've done the layer we're going to use translucent powder on a cotton pad and we're going to push that over the top and this is going to set that foundation in place. Then we're going to go back in with our concealer brush and apply another coat of the foundation. And then we're going to do the same process again, taking the cotton pad dipped in the translucent powder and pressing that over the eyebrow. And this is going to set that in place and stop it from moving all day. If you have any excess powder, just use a soft brush just to dust that off. Now we're going to take that foundation around the eyes. Don't set the cream on the eyes until the last minute because cream on the eyelids does tend to crease because of the warmth. So you'll want to set that last minute. An alternative for this to prevent the creasing would be to use a face paint of a similar colour but you probably will notice the difference. I just like to use a cream and set it and if it does shift during the day I just go over it with my finger or a brush and just set it back in place. You can set underneath the eye straight away that's not a problem as that tends not to crease as much. As you can see I really pack the powder on, push it in place and then dust the excess off and I find this lasts all day. Handsome Jack's lips are the same colour as his mask, I think it goes over the entire face, so don't forget to coat your lips. I like to use a concealer brush just to get into the cracks of the lips because you don't want any of your natural skin colour coming through. The best way to do this is to smile so you can get right in there. And then again, use a translucent powder to set that in place. 
To add a little bit of shading around the mask, I'm taking another Supra Colour foundation, but this one is slightly darker than Jack's skin tone, and I'm tracing the outside line of the mask. I'm only doing this on the forehead and around the temple line. A lot of this look is building, so we're going to do all the foundations first and then go back in and then build on them. So I'm going to start by plotting out the areas for the frowns and I'm using a warm eyeshadow by MAC and this is called Saddle. Any warm brown eyeshadow will do but remember to use a matte shade, you don't want anything with a shimmer in it. I'm not making the lines overly symmetrical but we do have a main line following the triangular shape on the forehead and then a couple of arch areas where the brackets are and then just a few varied ones at the top of the forehead. The best thing I can advise for this look is to bring up an image of Handsome Jack and work from that. There are a few varied images, so just choose one that you feel that you're capable of copying and go from there. I'm relining the top of the mask using a matte black eyeshadow. The brush I'm using is by Cryolan and this is a lip brush and it's angled and I think this is number 6, it's from the professional range. I'm going to be using a light brown to add a bit of shade into the top of the forehead on the mask but I don't want it to come out too dense so I'm going to set this part of the mask using translucent powder first and then work on top of it with the brown eyeshadow. The colour I'm using is called Wedge and this is a light brown eyeshadow and I'm using a fluffy blending brush just to distribute some of that onto the shallow V shape of the forehead. I'm using my reference images of Handsome Jack so I know where to put the colours. Now I'm mapping in the shape for the eyebrows. The eyebrow on the left to look at is going to be starting slightly lower than the frown line that we've put in and the one on the right is going to be joining up with the frown line so they won't be totally even. It's these small details that you need to pay attention to when copying a look because this really makes the character look like the character. So I'm going over the line that we mapped out for the eyebrows earlier and I'm using a matte brown eyeshadow for this. We're going to fill in the whole entire brow with the matte brown first and then we're going to outline those eyebrows with a mix of matte black and matte brown together and this will give us a really intense dark brown shade. So by doing this we're going to make the eyebrows look like they've been drawn on and look more like the Handsome Jack eyebrows. Here on a pencil brush I'm taking the wedge eyeshadow which is the light brown and I'm creating more of a shadow in the frown line area here between the eyebrows and this is going to create a little bit more depth to this area. I'm also adding some shading underneath the bracket on both sides of the forehead and this is going to make the mask part of the face look more three dimensional. On my angled lip brush using the matte brown shade I am mapping in a crease for the eye and then I'm using my pencil brush just to soften that and create a little bit more of a shadow appearance to it. Now I'm redefining that line between the eyes and this is a line that separates the bridge of the nose from the forehead and I'm also darkening the frown line between the eyebrows in the little triangular shape. As you go along and progress with these looks you'll notice that you need to keep going over certain areas that need more depth or need to look a bit more prominent. I'm adding a couple more lines to the top of the forehead and then I'm going back in over some of the ones I've already applied and just deepening them and making them a little bit more shaded. As I did before, I'm mixing the matte black and matte brown together and I'm placing it underneath the bracket and this is going to create a shadow appearance. I'm dragging some matte brown from the inner corner of the eye towards the nose and then I'm taking that same colour in a very straight line down the bridge of the nose towards the top of the nostrils. Handsome Jack has got a lot of shading down the sides of his nose and this is going to be the foundation for this shading. So I've plotted the line down either side of the nose and then I'm using a soft brush just to blend that colour and create a bit of shading. We'll be coming back to this in a little while. I'm creating some definition to the rest of the mask so I'm adding a few dark lines underneath the eyes and then blending them and again this is going to create shadow and this is going to make the mask look like it's set on the face. I'm adding a small amount to the small line area and then blending that out and this is going to create a nice natural shadow there. In keeping with making the mask look like it's wrapped around Jack's face, we're going to draw a line down from where the end of the eyebrow is to follow the cheekbone. I'm not going to take the colour any lower than in line with the bottom of the ear, instead I'm going to use the brush just to drag that colour down over the cream product towards the chin meeting where the bracket is. Next we want to define the tip of the nose, we want it to look very angular and very geometric so we want to draw it in sort of straight lines and make it look quite sketchy. We're going to be coming back to this and going over this with a darker eyeshadow. So for now we're going to soften these lines but we've got the basic shape there. Next I'm drawing two lines down the filtrum and doing a light amount of shading just in between those. To make 
Jack's lips look a little bit more like handsome Jack's, I'm adding a slight curve to the very ends of them and this is just going to pull the lips up slightly making them resemble handsome Jack's a little bit more. And then I'm also going over the top of the lips with a brown eyeshadow just around the circumference of them. We are going to be darkening the top lip so we'll just keep building on top of this with the colour. We're going to make Jack's bottom lip look a bit fuller so we're applying eyeshadow just at the base of it and in between the bracket and the top lip and this is going to create shadow there. To enhance the three dimensional appearance of the mask I'm using a light brown eyeshadow down the side of the face. Handsome Jack's jaw is quite squared off so we're going to do the same with Jack's. At the first line of the bracket we're going to draw a line either side on the chin and then at the top corner of the square we've created we're going to draw a line at a slight angle following the shape of the jaw. As Handsome Jack is a drawn character, he's quite sketchy looking as I've mentioned before, so I'm taking a tiny paintbrush dipped into the matte black eyeshadow from Louise Young and I'm just making some sketch marks all over the mask. By adding tiny lines to where the hinges are on the brackets, it makes it look like there's wear and tear and as if it's gathered dirt and it just looks old and worn in. I'm not being neat about it, it's not uniformed, it's literally just going in and dabbing tiny little lines, dots and just sketchy marks all over the mask. I'm revisiting all the areas with placed shadow and applying tiny sketches to those areas. And as you can see I've also gone down the nose making it look more drawn and more square and geometrical. When you go on Google and look for images of Handsome Jack, make sure you go into the settings and tick large images because you want to bring up ones that show as much detail of the face as possible, that way you've got the best chance of copying it to an exact. I'm working from about 4 or 5 different images here and they all vary slightly. Now I've got most of the sketchy parts of the mask done, I'm looking at the reference images and then looking back at my one and seeing where it needs to be darker or more defined. So I'm going back in with the dark and light eyeshadow and just placing in more depth to different areas of the face and just making it resemble as much of the reference images as possible. Aside from the large brackets that Handsome Jack wears on his face, he also has two bolts on the inner corners of his eyes. So for ease and comfort I'm just going to paint these on with the silver from the Super Colour palette. These are really effective because they're really metallic and they really reflect well. For the hair I already put a white stripe through Jack's hair and I used the white Super Colour to do this. And I also painted in some dark lines through the hair just to make it look more drawn in the flesh. In the reference images of Handsome Jack his hairline is very defined by dark shadow. So using a dark matte brown eyeshadow, I'm drawing in choppy wave marks around the hairline and then I'm using a fluffy brush to blend in that brown to any of Jack's visible scalp. And then like I did with the eyebrows, I'm going around the outside edge of this with the dark brown mixed with a little bit of the black. To complete the look, we need to incorporate the ears and also the neck. So I'm following the natural contours of Jack's ears using the angled brush with the matte black eyeshadow. I also set the eyelids with a matte eyeshadow to stop them from creasing, I did this last minute. And then we popped in two coloured contact lenses, one green and one blue as Handsome Jack wears and we got these from CamoEyes.com and I will put their link in the description bar. I really do hope you've enjoyed this one, it's a bit different. Thanks for watching. If you missed any of my previous tutorials you can click here and they will take you to those and you can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.